This is Susan London reporting from the annual meeting of the American Society of Clinical Oncology in Chicago. I'm talking with Dr. Kimberly Blackwell about the AMELIA trial. Can you tell us a little bit about the trial? Sure. So the AMELIA study um, examined the role of a brand new way of treating breast cancer known as an antibody drug conjugate. So the AMELIA study took an antibody drug conjugate known as TDM1 for the treatment of metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer and compared it to a standard combination of lapatinib and capecitabine, which is approved in many places, including the United States throughout the world. There was a 17% absolute improvement in overall survival at the second year. So 17 more out of 100 women were alive at that 24 months because they got the TDM1 versus the um, control arm of capecitabine and lapatinib. And mechanistically speaking, why, why do you think TDM1 was, had superior efficacy in this trial? Sure. So TDM1 maintains the normal properties of trastuzumab. So you can actually measure free trastuzumab in patients receiving the TDM1. But, um, you know, and I tell this to patients, I put chemotherapy on cancer cells in the lab all day long, and it works really well. Why is it that it's not helping my cancer patients? And the reason it probably isn't is because we can't get enough of the chemo to the cancer cells because we hurt the rest of the patient. And so I think the fact that there are between three and four chemotherapy molecules for every Herceptin antibody and targeting that cytotoxic directly to the cancer cells enabled us to get higher levels of chemotherapy while retaining the activities of trastuzumab. One of the advantages of the capecitabine-lapatinib combination is that it's oral, and with TDM1, it seems like we're putting patients back in the infusion chair. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so, I mean, I've spent many years studying lapatinib. I think there's still a role for lapatinib and capecitabine in the treatment of metastatic HER2-positive breast cancer. However, as our experience with oral medications has really expanded, we realize it's not as easy as just taking a pill. I think it's really going to be up to, once the drug becomes available, it's going to be up to the physician and the patient to really weigh the pros and cons of an oral regimen where you still have to be monitored every three weeks on capecitabine lapatinib. At least in my practice, I still check counts. I still am seeing the patient. I'm adjusting their dose based on diarrhea and other GI side effects. So there are um, some other new agents uh, coming up for HER2-positive breast cancer, such as pertuzumab. If um, TDM1 is approved, where do you envision it fitting into the landscape for this disease? Sure. So Amelia wasn't designed to really help us understand what we should do first line, second line, third line. It's an important point about the trial that it involved for second and third line patients. Um, Pertuzumab has been studied in combination with traditional chemotherapy and trastuzumab in, in the case of the Cleopatra study with docetaxel. It had a tremendous impact on progression-free survival as well of six months. And again, it goes back to kind of this art of oncology, which is, um, at least in the Amelia study, all of the patients had seen ataxane, all of the patients had seen trastuzumab. In the United States, m- many patients will have already seen that, those combinations of drugs in the adjuvant setting. And I think it's going to be about having a very honest discussion with patients, which is, here's a drug, pertuzumab, we can add with docetaxel and trastuzumab. It's probably similar to some of the other drugs you've received for, as part of your care. Here's a drug that binds a, a cytotoxic with uh, uh, antibody, TDM1, and I think, and then we have lapatinib and capecitabine all oral, and it is going to be, unless limited by how the drugs are reimbursed or supplied, I think it is going to be a discussion between a provider and the patient.